now uh, this is going to be my first movie review, so let's. So it's going to be my first time doing this. So I know, I know, not all of you comment comment that much. So I want to try my first movie review. I haven't done movie reviews as much because you know, I didn't really want to talk about it too much because you know it's kind of mouthful, but. Not also that, but I kind of get pretty nervous because every time when I say things about about a movie review, it doesn't make sense what I said. But uh, you know, uh, let's move on and see how it goes. So uh, for the Suicide Squad movie, I watched it on a Thursday night, uh, Thursday night at 6 p.m. and you know, I had a really fun time. So let me go over the review first. Do I think this movie is great? No, absolutely not. Do I think there's some parts that I do love and like? Sure, I do. There's some parts I dislike. Kinda, but not as always. And what are my? And uh, there are things I do like, but let me go with the things I disliked for not not a lot. Let me go with the things I dislike. So I, if you can hear me, so the things I dislike is actually a uh, boomerang uh, because you know it's because he doesn't really do much except he. I mean he is kind of funny and he does have a pretty pretty cool dialogues, but it just doesn't. I just really wish I want to see him more on screen time. And another thing that, and second thing is like the pacing was pretty a uh, bit of a mix, kind of. But you know, but it's not a bad movie, I should say. I mean, if you're if you're a DC fan, if this can, might be optional for you. And the and the third thing I disliked is actually like you know. Uh, Hold on a sec, I need to think. Oh yeah, the thing I dislike is actually Katana. I really wish I want to see her more on screen time also because she was only like, her scene was like this close to it. Like, you know, you've seen her probably in a few, sometimes in the first and sometimes in the end. She doesn't really talk much except she only speaks Japanese. And she sometimes speaks English for like this much. I'm not going racist. I'm not going racist, but you know, you know, it's just if you guys have been watching the movie, you'll understand what I mean. Uh, oh, and another thing that's a problem, uh, you know, uh, the Joker. I mean, the Joker is only seen in few few minutes, but 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 there's things I like about the Joker of Jared Leto. It's like you know he did in a he did a pretty good job for portraying us the character, but I feel like he did. He's been taking it too seriously for whatever reason, but but I do like the way he looks, the way he sounds. I feel like he's he's portraying it pretty well, and he and I feel like he's respecting Heath Ledger, which you guys Heath Ledger or Mark Hamill. You guys don't know Mark Hamill is actually the first guy who who is one of the most definitive Joker of all time, such as you might have seen him from the animated series, the Justice League Unlimited, especially. Especially, he's one of the best voice actors. You might have known him from the Star Wars episode four through four through six. Also, episode seven as the end of the cameo cameo of Star Wars: Force Awakens. And my second favorite would be Heath Ledger, because he give because I thought I thought I thought Heath Ledger was really the way he made a smile on his face when he said like "Why so serious?" Just like I had a knife right here. So yeah. Okay, so uh. So yeah, I mean the movie's not bad. I mean, and also, also let's go over the things that I want to get off my chest. To be honest, I have to disagree the critics because you know, because you know there are parts that I do like. There are parts that I do like about this movie, and there are some problems with it. There are some problems with it, and there's there's, there's some parts I do like, and there's some parts I don't like. Like I said before, let me go back to things that I don't like as much. You know, I really, you know. Uh, you know, I really wish, I really, really wish things would have been, uh, pretty good for so far. Uh, you know, for an example, like, uh, let me think. Uh, there, let me go, yeah, like I said about the dislikes. Uh, the dislikes is actually, like, you know, about the... Rick Flag is going to steam on, uh, June Moon, because it doesn't make sense to me, because, you know, June Moon never had a relationship with a with a soldier, especially the witch, it doesn't make sense to me. Rick Flagg is actually known in the comics was actually known for like in the past he once had a team which which is Task Force X, which is actually a group of a group of soldiers trying to trying to protect their country. And he was actually more of a strict guy, but he's but in the movie he's sometimes more of a lover. Lover with uh, Enchantress, which I think is pretty weird. I mean, if you guys have been watching the animated series, you see Rick Flagg before. Like, you know, he's a he's a strict guy. So yeah.
I mean, uh, I think that's everything for the dislikes. If I is there anything I miss, I might go back to the end of it. Now let's go with things I that I do like. Okay, so if you guys wonder what I'm wearing is the Harley Quinn shirt. You know why I'm wearing this? Cause I love her. I've seen her in the anime series. Just so you know, I sh I showed you in previous videos about the action figure over there. So yeah, the things I do like like about it, Will Smith. Great, great job. I really appreciate the your acting, the humor of it, and I do like how how it works. Like you might have known Deadshot, D Deadshot from other comics. Like he was once a shooter who never misses, once a mercenary who never misses. He might have appeared in Detective Comics where where he's trying to protect Gotham, but when Bat, this is actually a bit spoiler from the from the Detective Comics, like. Like Batman was on a vacation, uh, they need to find another hero to protect Gotham. So, so the mayor decided, like you know, to hire Deadshot as a new, as a new protector of the city. But things have changed. You guys know what I mean once you guys read the Detective Comics. But in the New Fifty Two, uh, his origins was actually been renewed, uh, renewed possibly the second time I think. But still, I do like his character development. It looks great. Uh, it feel it feels right. You know, I do like how the way he looks, how the way he feels. His mask looks awesome. So uh, yeah. And another, and there's another thing, and the second thing I like: Harley Quinn, Margaret Robbie. You did a great job, and this is why I love you because I have this shirt. See? Yeah, I love you. Margaret Robbie, if you're watching this, I really love your acting performance. I love your Brooklyn style accent, which which we haven't seen in the action movies before. So I'm glad you put it there. That that's pretty good. I, I like that. Thank thank you, Margaret Robbie. I feel like her character development uh, is pretty good. And it's pretty tricky to use the Brooklyn the Brooklyn accent based off on the animated series. Like ha Holly Quinn, nice to meet ya. Yeah, it's pretty tricky to do a Brooklyn voice. If you if you live in New York, then you you'll know how to pull that off. If you don't, then it's gonna be pretty tricky. But I'm not I'm not being judgmental about it. You guys might have seen her. Oh, uh, I've heard I've heard in the end. Let me give you a spoiler. On the end of the movie, we are gonna have a Harley Quinn movie pretty soon, and I and I'm probably sure we might see. Uh, Poison Ivy. If you guys are familiar with her, she was actually Harley Quinn met each other since when they were best friends when they're trying to rob rob a museum. You might have seen the animated series called a poor uh, called Harley and Ivy, which is actually one of my personal favorite episodes from the animated series. You know, I thought that I hope we get to see a relationship with Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn because they had a really they had a really strong relationship. But uh, I mean, seriously, you got. Seriously, you haven't seen the episode of that? You're gonna love it. Wait, I think someone tweeted me. I'll get that later. Uh, okay, uh, so, uh, so yeah. And then another thing is, and the last part that I like was El Diablo. What a rude, what an impressive, what, what a really cool, uh, character for the most part. His character felt emotional, like, you know, like, let me give you a little spoiler. From now we're going to spoil it. His origin in this movie involves like you know he he was actually hired for doing some cr some bad things, but he, but things but things went things went things went out of his way since when he's trying to since when he cared about his kids, cared about his kids and his girl, and the thing is like he since the wife she was so she was so fucking pissed at him because of the because of the. Because the things that he did was pretty uh, illegal, illegal like, like you know, killing people by using his uh, pyrokinesis. Which, which he is he a metahuman? I don't know. If he, let me know in the comments below if he really is or not. And the thing is, uh, now, now I thought his I thought his character was pretty interesting for the most part. I do like it. It's it's sometimes you want to get to know the character a lot, and it's great. And let me go on spoilers again. So the thing, so the thing about the joke. So let me go over the things that first. Like you know, you guys, there are some, 
there's some Easter eggs that are really, really funny and really, and really, and really interesting to me. It's like, you know, when, in the first movie, since when I watched it, I saw there are a few clips, when this and that, this and that. When you see Harley Quinn at the first, you get to see, guess what? Her original, co her original costume for the animated series. That I love so much from, from that. It's, it's so interesting and so weird to me. I mean, I think they, I think... I think they put it there as a joke or something. I don't know for sure. But I thought it was really good to see her original outfit. But I don't think that looks good on her. But still, but still, you might have loved her from the uh, comics or from the animated series. You guys love that, right? We all love the, her, her definitive look. Especially, I got that action figure right there. Or, or from DC Collectibles. If you guys have that action figure, then you're going to love it. Look, and uh, another spoiler. And, excuse me, uh... And another spoiler is, uh, I don't even know what to say, man. Like, uh, like Killer Croc is, a lot, I should have said this before, but I kind of missed that. It's just that because he's m much more forgettable. I mean, just so you know, uh, the thing, ab thing about Killer Croc, you only see him in a few scenes, but, he, but he, there are some funny dialogues with him. He's like, I'm beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, his dialogue's still good. It's not bad, but... But so, but I thought, I thought it was pretty good. And the Enchantress, in the end of the Enchantress character, I feel like I would have loved that, I would have loved that character a lot more if she would have been more, if she would have been more really scary, really, really cool, really, really fan favorite, but it's just kind of, it's there. I mean, the weird thing about it is like the brother, the sibling thing, kind of, but it's just, it needs to have an origin of why, why she had a brother. So, uh. That's gonna be oh, that's gonna, yeah, I will leave that for later. And uh, yeah, I felt like end of the movie felt pretty weird. But the thing is that there are some themes that are pretty interesting to me for the most part. Like you know, when in the end of the movie, when Deadshot, when uh, Harley Quinn throw a gun, throw a gun to give it to Deadshot. Once it changed to hate. Once he tried to shoot it, but he was actually, but the Enchantress controlled, controlled Deadshot's memories to see. To see that he was actually, it was a mirage to him of his daughter, and he decided to embrace it because he knows that it's not real. Her real daughter, her real, his real, I mean, his real daughter would, would never do, would do that, but in the first movie, but you know, sometimes in the, sometimes in the end, it, once the, once the bell changes, it says love, love, which is actually a pretty interesting theme to me, like, you know, he really, like, if he, if he if he kills Enchantress, if he kills Enchant if he kills Enchantress when the bomb goes off, like when the bomb goes off, where Killer Croc throws it, since when the bomb goes off, uh, you know, he shoots it and the portal the portal disables. So, yeah, once the like like Deadshot was trying to embrace his sadness and his daughter daughter's out of his wayness, but you know. So yeah, and another spoilers, uh, Bat Affleck, which is Ben Affleck or Batman, which is which is good to see him, which is good to see him for the most part, but but one of the things that pretty that's pretty different in the movie is like you know where uh where uh he doesn't kill but he did but he did, did disarm Deadshot from shooting him but you know when. When his daughter, it was actually in the first movie, but in the, when his daughter, when his daughter was actually out of the way, he, she was like, dad, please don't, dad, please don't, please don't fucking do this. I really don't, if you kill him, it's not, it's not going to come back. I can't let that happen. And dad, she was like, and he's trying to hold the trigger and he kept telling her, just move. I don't, I don't want to kill you. And, and he just pulls it down and he surrenders. And it shows some character, like, you know, he's not just a, like, he's not a killer. He's not just a killer. He would never, he would never, Deadshot was actually known for, to kill any, any guys that he wants. He would never kill children. He would never kill any children, because that's, because he has a daughter. So, which makes sense for this character. And, you know, you might have seen Deadshot in the comics before. He was actually... Like he he when he was a little kid he missed a shot since when he's trying to save his brother I think, and he missed a shot and he almost shot his brother and he was sent into a prison, I think. So yeah, and moving on. Now I did, 
mix it up mix it up with chronological orders and I understand that so you guys know what I mean okay uh, let me think okay so and let me think okay uh, so Ben Affleck like I said before about Ben Affleck I really wish Zack Snyder or Warner Warner Brothers to fix his character development because like in like in the Batman v Superman, he kills. But in the comics, he was actually known for never to kill because he don't he doesn't want to suffer the same the same consequences just like what happened to the killer that he did. Batman was actually never known for that kind of stuff. No, he was never. If you don't believe me, you should read the books because I feel like you're just trying to make us you're just trying to make us feel bad and you try to make us excited first. But in the, when we watched the movie, we were disappointed about it about Batman's character development. Like I said, he was never he never used guns or never to kill. So you guys don't understand that. What is actually wrong with you guys? Come on, man. And another thing is like just so you know, the Batman v Superman like before, I like the movie. It's just not really a great movie, of course. But just yeah, I mean I don't know. Shit. Oh, and yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I just, I, I just can't think. I just can't stop thinking too much. Oh gosh. Okay, let's move on. And one of my uh, favorite parts about the, about the Suicide Squad, uh, Flash, Flash cameo. We did, which is, which is really good to see him. I mean, his dialogue is pretty short, but we only get to see him as a cameo, for that kind of stuff. So. So it's good, which is good to see him. His costume looks pretty accurate on the Justice League uh, trailer, which you guys might have seen them before. So, so like I said, it's nice to see the the Flash in in his screen time only for one, but in the end of the movie on, but in the end of the movie we did get to see some few cameos. I might have to tell you that after when I'm done with this spoilers about my favorite part. And another and another cool fact about. And like I said before about the El Diablo character, he sacrif the he's he he doesn't he was actually known like he used to kill he used to kill other other people for money, but he decided to quit that because due due like the, all the anger that he had drove drove him insane. It almost killed all of his family, and he decided and that's part of the reason why he surrendered himself because all. Because he lost one of his loved ones, and that what makes the character pretty interesting to give the character a bit of a depth, you know? You know what I mean? And also, uh, you know? And I'm, and I think the last thing I want to say is like, you know, uh, hold on guys. I'm trying to remember, but it's really hard because there's some things I like, there's some things I don't like. Okay, here we go. And, uh, and, uh, one thing that I do, that I do think is pretty, pretty interesting, like, you know, the things I do like about the movie was, like, you know, I hope, like, you know, uh, Deadshot, like, Deadshot, he was, like, yeah, Deadshot was actually a core cool character, like I said before in the, in the development, like, about Will Smith did a great job with Deadshot, but there's still things I do like about it, like, you know, the funny thing is, like, he, the weird thing about, the weird or funny thing is, like, you know, he made a, he made a mix and match with, uh, with how to, how to, like, how, how to teach your daughter to do, how to teach, how to teach her, how to teach each other with her daughter to learn, to study, like, with gun, gun or distance of the of the shooting you guys know what I mean in the in that so yeah I guess that's the last thing I want to say which I think is pretty interesting you know kind of but not always and also uh also uh on the after credit scene you guys might see like you know Bruce Wayne is talking to Amanda Waller to find uh to find evidence of the metahuman of the metahuman outbreak to see who these characters, who these, who they are, but, but just so you know, when he talked with Amanda Waller, he says, like, I can handle this, there's no, 
I can handle this. Uh, because, you know, after everything you've done, just caused the world to destroy. And I thought that was pretty... I mean, it's good to see a Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne to see there. But, you know, we did get to see another cameo. Not just... Not just the... Not just Barry Allen as the Flash. Or the Scarlet Speedster. But Aquaman was actually there also. Which I'm... Which I can't wait to see in the Justice League or in their solo movie. So... So if you guys are a fan of Justice League, you're going to be a fan of this one. And that's all I'm going to have to say. Uh, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, and you want to tell me, in the comments, you want to tell me how I got this shirt? Uh, it's actually from Hot Topic. If, you, if, you had, if you're at the mall in your area, you can get this. They, they only had a few of these, so yeah. I mean, like, favorite, share, subscribe, friend me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, Instagram to see more updates and videos like this and I know I understand why I know I understand this is pretty weird for me to do a review like this but you know hey I mean it's my to be honest it's actually my uh my choice so I want to I want to tell you guys like the meta about the metacritics I mean like I said before I disagree what they said because you know there are parts I do like do I give what movie do I give this rating uh 7.5 out of 10 because there are parts I do like there's parts I don't like But I can't wait to see but I hope in the next few years I hope we get to see a Batman solo film like also in the Batman solo film I think we're gonna have more screen time with Joker and Harley Quinn. I hope I hope so and Just so you know uh, one more thing. Do you guys know about uh? J.K. Simmons is going to portray as Jim Gordon, which is actually one of my personal favorite actors who played as J.K. Simmons, which he is so fucking awesome. Oh, my God. I I can't forget all the great acting for you did for Whiplash, Spider-Man 1 through 2. And thank you, Sam Raimi, for making good movies like this. This I really do appreciate that. If you're watching this, Sam Raimi, you'll, you'll know what I mean. But I hope J.K. Simmons will have a great, great development. And as the as the commissioner going pretty soon, I really really hope. And I hope Jeremy Irons, you know, who played as Alfred. I mean, he I thought he did a great job portraying as Alfred. Yeah, and that's all I'm gonna have to say. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys want to see more videos? I'll put the. If you guys want to subscribe to my channel, it's actually in the link in the description down below. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video, and uh, I might do some more toy hauls, or maybe more movie reviews like this, and you want to get this Harley Quinn shirt, I might put this link in the description down below, you want to, I might put the link that says hottopic.com to get this shirt, or any other merchandise you like, so yeah, peace, motherfucker.